Hi, my name is Mr. Shirelli, and I will be your instructor this year for the Grade 12 Computer Programming via eLearning. And what I'd like to do over the next couple of minutes is just introduce you to how you would go into the course and use all the different features. And before I get rolling, though, I'd like to mention that this particular course this semester is being taught asynchronously, which is a little bit different than how we've done the course before. What we've done before is usually, for instance, maybe in period one, we have all the students sign up for the course in period one, and I sign in the morning, 8.30 or so, and I teach you live. So you would see my screen, I'd be in, obviously at Burbuff, and you would be at St. Mary's or Bishop Tonus or wherever, and you would see me teach the course, go through the lessons, whatever, on your screen, and I would be in uh, uh, at my school here in uh, Burbuff. Now, what's different this semester is that because we can't get everybody into period one class or period five class or whatever, we're doing it asynchronously. asynchronously. So you won't see me live, but what you'll do is you'll see videos of me teaching the lesson, pre-recorded, and then you will watch them and you know follow the along with the information and hopefully do your best. You will then be able to. Uh, contact me sometimes via chat or for the most part email. I usually my designated period will be period five. So it's a little bit different. So I'm going to try to be as helpful as uh, understanding as possible. So sometimes if we run into some issues, you know, we're going to try to deal with them. I'm not going to be very, you know, tough and say, okay, you got a zero because you didn't hand it in on time because you didn't understand exactly what we were doing. So it's a learning process for both of us. Now, when you uh, start the course, you're going to be given a password. Either your guidance counselor or a computer teacher is going to pass that information on to you. And then you're going to have to go to this site. And actually, you don't need this part in the address, but you're going to have to type in uh, hwcdsb.elearningontario.ca. And that'll take us to the board website for the e-learning. And then you'll type in uh, your login that they've given you. And I'm going to type in sort of a generic student one and hope I can get in. And when you get into the site, it's going to be information overload the first couple of days. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. But once you get used to it, it's, it's fairly straightforward and nicely laid out. Now, I'm in a number of different courses, obviously. But the one, for instance, that you're going to sign into is going to be the ICS4U. And yours will say second semester. And so that's what you do first. You press it. And then this is the main screen. And like I said, there's a ton of information here. We're going to try to go through in the next couple of minutes what all of it means and what you can do within the, the site and things like that. Now, just as an introduction, first of all, uh, you can click on the teacher background. That would take you to a site that would give me uh, an idea of, uh, about the teacher that you're uh, having the course being taught by. Mr. Shirelli, that's me. You can look at that at your, at your own convenience. What I'd like to know is something about you, too. So once you sign in the very, very first time, I'd like you to do a little survey. So that will take you to a little external site that I've made. Just want some information, your grade name, uh, your email, courses you've taken before. And this is really important down here. What period is your designated period? So if you're taking it in period two, I need to know that because I'm going to make up different tests for the students in each period. So you've got to make sure you write it in that particular period. Okay, so make sure you fill that out and submit it. Also, I'd like to know a bit more about you, so see where it says class list? When you press that, it's going to have your name. Now, obviously, right now, these are students that are in my other first semester class, so none of your names are there. But what you'll see when you go here is you'll see all the people that are in your class that you can email and talk to. And, for instance, let's say this is my name, obviously. Let's say that was your name. What I'd like you to do is go to profile and also this is one of the first things I'd like you to do and in there I want you maybe to put an image of yourself if you, if you, if you feel comfortable doing that. Put in some email information. Uh, this other stuff you don't have to really do. This one right here is going to be important. What you're going to do this semester for me is a blog. So when you find your blog address I'd like you to write it in there. Now that's it's sort of a, a site that I put in there just to show you that you can do it. But that's where you're going to type in your blog address. And your blog address is worth uh, marks. So you need to make sure you can uh, put that in there because I'm going to mark it. And it's worth 10% of your marks and communication marks we're going to do. Okay. So when you get a chance, the first couple of days, put in some information. And you can always go back and change it and modify it later on. Now, you're going, well, how do you get back to the main screen now? You press Course Home. 
and this will bring you back to the main screen we're looking at. Okay, so now let's go through more features of the LMS. And like I mentioned right at the beginning, I usually teach this class synchronously, which means it's live. But this semester, because of the way we can't get the schedule to work, we're teaching it asynchronously, which is fine. All right, and down here I mentioned that uh, second semester we're doing it asynchronously. Now, one of the key things you're going to have to realize, because some of you might think, well, okay, so if a guy gets the test first period, I can look at it. No, you're going to have to make sure you are writing your test in your designated period. That's the first thing. Second thing is you can't be at home to write tests. Like You can do your assignments at home and hand them in from wherever. That's the neat thing about this. Now you can do it wherever you want. But tests, you have to be in front of a real teacher in a room or the guidance office or wherever they designate that that's where you guys are going to be. But you have to be in front of a teacher to write a test. Okay, so that's the one thing. You know, you, you don't want any, uh, you know, cheating or anything like that or any possibilities of even thinking about that. So you have to be in front of a teacher. All right, let's slide down a bit. Um, one of the first things you should do once you log in here is click on course outline and in a second you'll see it's a PDF file and I want you to print out the entire course outline. Now what the entire course outline does besides telling you the, the marking and what everything's worth in the course is it tells you every single day what I'm going to do. Okay, so right now we're doing this thing called first day orientation. I'm going to go through a bunch of different things with you. And then every day I've written like little point form uh, notes of what I'm going to do every single day. So, for instance, the first real day of computer programming, this is what I'm going to cover. All right, so as you watch me teach that online when you, you get rolling, that's going to be all the different ideas I want you to, to understand that day in that lesson. So then you see a little line there, and this will be the next day. Okay, and it keeps going and keeps going, obviously. Okay, and over here on the right, you see like whatever this lesson is, it tells you the unit and activity we're doing, and I'll explain more about that in a second. Okay, so make sure you print that entire thing out. It's about uh, 20 or so pages. Keep that in the front of your book so you can use that as a reference. Okay, later on, if you want to have a chance to look at this, you can look at the daily routine. Like I mentioned before, we're going to have two major components. Obviously, we're going to have tests and we're going to have assignments. And when you hand in an assignment, you're going to hand it into what's called a Dropbox. And we'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. But up here at the very top, you will see this thing called a Dropbox. All right. And after you finish an assignment, you're going to submit it this way. So, for instance, uh, Unit 2, Activity 3 looks like February 7th is something due. And you're going to hand it in there. Right, so as you do these things, you're going to uh, click on here and submit the assignment. Now, notice here it says right now opens February 6th. So these things that you want to hand in, you can't even begin to hand them in yet because they're locked in. But just for fun, let's pretend you had to hand in one, and this one here is not one of the ones you're going to hand in. So it's letting me press it. If you press it, what it does is opens up a screen. Okay, and then basically you can write down, hey sir, here's my assignment if you want, but the most important thing is you're going to uh, attach a file, and uh, it's going to be zipped up, so I'll teach you that in a second, but that's basically how you're going to hand in an assignment and submit it. Okay, let's go back for a second, back to the course home. All right, we're going a little bit farther down now. Uh, when you start blogging, and you heard me mention that, you need a blogging account. So if you're not familiar with blogging, it's like posting uh, whatever you're interested in. It doesn't have to be a computer science. What I want students to do is it forces you to improve your English skills. Now, this is uh, my blog. All right. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can get on. You can go to the genericblogger.com. You can use Tumblr. It's totally up to, up to you. All right. And... Um, why don't I show you uh, my blog? Okay, so here's my blog, uh, cshirelli.blogspot.ca. So that's the address you would type in to your profile. And what I'll do every two weeks is I will mark your blog. I'll read whatever you, you had to say and things like that. So this would be a typical uh, example. Now, this is my blog. Let me show you a couple of uh, blogs that I think students did. Okay, so for instance, here's some great student blogs. These are from way back. Uh, Here's a, here's, a, here's a blog. This student was into anime, I guess. You can write whatever you're passionate about, but write about it, okay, in sentence form. What you're going to do is every two weeks write at least four blogs, four postings. So that would be one posting. This guy got crazy here. There's another posting. That's an example of a blog. Here's another one from a girl I taught a couple years ago. A little bit more reasonable size. So anything like this, two or three paragraphs. 
I do about four postings, so that's two there, three, and four. That would be considered a unit in two weeks, okay? And I'm going to mark this five times this semester, so each one's going to be worth about 2%. All right, so it forces you to uh, write and improve your English skills. You can write about anything you want, uh, anything you're passionate about. You can include pictures and things like that. Okay, so those are blocks. Final exam. There is a final exam in this class, and the uh, final exam will be probably written here at Verbuff. It'll be written at your seat. It won't be like a practical exam. There'll be uh, mostly computer programming questions where you have to answer them on a piece of paper. So make sure you realize that. There are different kinds of uh, marking. Uh, this semester, obviously, we do assignments, major assignments, and everything else. But the final exam is written, and it's here at Verbuff, and obviously, we'll figure out the date later on in the course. Now, Getting near the bottom here, uh, what do you need to, to use this, uh, do this program and, you know, learn uh, the main part of the course? Well, you need a computer program called C Sharp. Let me go here for a sec. And when it pops up, it pops up to 2012, which we do not have installed on our machines at school. Okay. We only have 2008. Now, if you want, you can backtrack a bit. So see where it says 2010 Express Products. And you can load in 2010 because that seems to work with 2008. 2012 probably won't downgrade to 2008. And remember, we're going to be teaching uh, using uh, C Sharp. So that's the one that you, you should download. Now, what I'm also going to do when I go to the schools is I'm going to send you some DVDs which have the 2008 on them, which if you feel more comfortable because then that would definitely no problems going back and forth uh, from school and home. You could store stuff and do it at school and vice versa. So you could possibly wait if you want, and you can install version 2008, 2010, 2012. They don't conflict with each other. They all have a life of their own, so uh, it doesn't really matter. But I'd feel comfortable if you had 2008. Later on in the course, we're going to do Xbox games. So this uh, location right here, this is something you add on top of C Sharp. This is XNA Game Studio. Okay, So you'll have to download that and install that after you've installed uh, C Sharp. Now, uh, there's some utilities here and some neat little uh, sites that give you free books on how to make Xbox games in XNA, so you can refer to them if you want. Let me slide down a bit here. Now, we also do Flash games. The only problem with Flash is it's not free, so you have to make sure you do use the one at school. Now, the one in school would be Adobe, and we're going to be using CS4. Now, I think it's up to CS6 now. If you can get a copy of it, you know, good for you, but uh, this is expensive. Okay, it's not free. And uh, we're using CS4 at school to do flash gaming, which we're going to be doing. Okay. Uh, I was